Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to New Zor Education. Um, I would like to um, to have a couple of words about similarity of um, objects which are which are not um, the ones which contain just straight lines and, and, and planes. So it's not like cubes or um, pyramids, for instance. A little bit more complex. What I mean is cylinders. And, and cones and spheres. Well, similarity in two-dimensional um, space on a plane, um, mostly about straight objects, straight lines um, uh, and uh, uh, angles. Um, similarity of uh, non-straight objects uh, is a little bit less of a concern because the only um, object which consists of non-straight lines on the plane is basically a circle and uh, all circles are similar to each other uh, so there is no not, not, not much of a theory behind it um, and uh, obviously all circles are similar to each other because similarity is a scale uh, is based on scaling and scaling preserves equality so if two points of a circle were on the same distance from the center and you scale this circle then two corresponding points will also be on equal um, distance from the corresponding image of a, of a center so it's kind of simple in uh, three-dimensional space as i was saying there are a little bit more complex uh, figures which contain non-straight elements and i would like to spend a um, very short time to basically talk about this type of similarity. Well, I do suggest you to uh, watch this lecture from unizor.com. It contains uh, whatever I'm talking right now as a, as a text as well. So there is a video pr presentation and, and, and there, is, uh, there is a text to it which you can read as a textbook. All right, so um, the first one is cylindrical surface. Okay, first of all, let's recall that we did discuss similarity in three-dimensional space as a scaling and scaling preserve the straight lines uh, so the image of a straight line is a straight line um, it also preserves equality between the lengths so if two uh, segments for instance are equal to each other in lengths then after scaling the resulting segments will be equal so the length is preserved, the equality between the lengths is preserved, and, um, and angles are preserved into, in, in, in the scaling. Uh, the image has exactly the same angle as, as the source, because the image of the straight line is always parallel to the source. If you have a straight line, and this is some kind of a scaling with this center and whatever the factor is, the resulting will be a uh, straight line parallel to the original one. And I'm talking only about three-dimensional space right now. All right, so angles are preserved. And by the way, not only angles, but also dihedral angles are preserved. These are all topics we did discuss before. So right now we're talking about cylindrical surface. That's my first topic. Now. Let's just recall what is a cylindrical surface. You have a generatrix, which is a straight line, and you have some kind of a curve, which is called directrice. And now, through each point on this directrice, we draw a line parallel to our generatrix. Whatever the shape it, 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 it might actually take. So this is a cylindrical surface. Or you might say it's uh, the result of a movement, um, if you can introduce this dyna dynamism, movement of a straight line which is um, uh, drawn through one point parallel to the generatrix as it moves parallel to itself along the curve. doesn't really matter what kind of approach you use, it's basically the same thing. Now, what if we take some kind of a uh, point as a center of, uh, of the scaling and scale the whole picture. So every point of this curve will be somehow 
um, uh, transformed into another curve, right? But now let's think about it. Since image of the uh, straight line is a straight line parallel to original, so the image of the generatrix will be another generatrix which is also a straight line parallel to this one and each of these will be parallel to um, uh, to the new, new new generatrix and which means it will be actually parallel to itself so this parallelism is preserved and that's why cylindrical surface is transformed by scaling into cylindrical surface so um, that basically is all about cylindrical surfaces now, before going to a circular cylinder, uh, we have to just mention something which is quite obvious, but still needs to be discussed. What is the image of a circle? Now, I did mention that on the plane, image of a circle is a circle which is similar to the original one. Now, why image of a circle is a circle? Well, because the distance is preserved. So these two points were on the same distance from this. Now you scale the whole thing and you have a, a bigger circle as, a, um, as an image. Now why, why is this a circle? Because image of this point will be somewhere here, image of this will be somewhere there and these distances will always be equal to each other. So if this is set of all points which are equidistant from the center and the distance is such and such then we scale the the radius and it, it's uh, it, it's bigger in this particular case but these also will be all these points which are on the same distance because equality between um, lengths of the two segments is preserved now same thing absolutely analogously is in the three-dimensional space so it doesn't really matter whether it's a plane or it's a three-dimensional space, scaling preserves the circularity, if you wish. So if object is circular, which means it contains all the points uh, which are lying in the same plane, uh, which are distance on the same distance from, um, from the center of the circle, then the base plane will be converted into a plane by scaling, and uh, since the equality of the lengths of the segments is preserved, then the image would be uh, a circle as well. So a circle is transformed into a circle. Okay, great. So what we have right now, the cylindrical surface is transformed into cylindrical surface. But now, when we are talking about a, um, a circular cylinder, it's a cylinder where um, the directress is a circle in some plane, right? Now, I didn't draw a, a circle which looks like a circle because it might be in the space, so I, I might just look at this at the, at, at the angle. So, this is a directress which is a circle in some plane. And now we have all these lines parallel to this one, and that would be our. Uh, circular cylinder. Now, why the image would be circular cylinder? Well, number one, because a circle will be transferred into a circle, also on the plane, on another plane, parallel to this one, by the way. Uh, it may be bigger, it may be smaller, but it will be a cylinder. Uh, I mean, it will be a circle. And straight lines, which are parallel to directors, will also be parallel to the new image of the directors. So, the image of this circular cyl cylinder would be a circular cylinder. Now the surface, this is the side surface, this is the base. Now similarly there is another base here uh, which is parallel to this one and the parallelism is preserved. So again the image would be a circular cylinder. And uh, finally if we are talking about straight circular cylinder, that's when these lines are perpendicular to the base. So this is a directress. This is a 
generatrix which is perpendicular to the plane where the directrix is located and now we have all these lines which constitute a cylinder now why is the uh, right circular cylinder preserves this type when you are scaling well because the perpendicularity will also be preserved what does it mean that the line is perpendicular to this um, base well it basically means that at least two uh, uh, lines on this base are perpendicular to um, to the generate to the generatrix and all these um, all these lines which form the side surface so this is perpendicular to at least two um, uh, straight lines on the base plane and again when we scale the whole thing the base plane will be transformed into another base plane um, these lines which form the side cylinder will also be parallel the circle into a circle and right angles will be transformed into right angles so the, the perpendicularity of the line and the plane is preserved when we are scaling everything so the line will be transformed to another line parallel to this one the plane will be transformed to a plane parallel to this one so this perpendicularity is preserved okay so right circular cylinder uh, is transformed into right circular cylinder so that's why um, we can talk about similarity in this particular case now um, I did not say and that would be incorrect if I did uh, I did not say that all right circular cylinders are similar to each other because for instance one can be thin and another can be short and fat and they are not similar to each other because similarity assumes the proportionality and this one is supposed to um, uh, relate to this as let's say the radius to the radius and in this particular picture that's not the case so I'm not saying that um, all the cylinders are similar to each other but if they are similar then one of them is being um, a right circular cylinder then another is also right circular uh, cylinder so from similarity follows the um, identity of the type okay what's our next figure cone okay now remember what cone is you have an apex which is a point and again some kind of a curve and we connect each point of the curve with an apex and that's our cylindrical surface well again obviously scaling preserve the cylindricity uh, so, sorry not conical sur conical surface so the the similarity preserves the conical type of the surface because the straight line goes into straight line now um, what's interesting is a circular cone now the circular cone is the cone when this particular directress is a circle now again let's just use whatever we were talking before if we transform it using the scaling the point will be converted into point a circle will be transformed into a circle and these lines which connect point to point will be converted into some kind of lines again straight lines so the, uh, the image of the um, uh, circular cone is a circular cone in the operation of uh, scaling okay now the next one is the right circular cone now what is the right circular cone that's the one when apex if perpendicular is dropped from it onto the base it goes to the center of the of the of the base of the circle so 
question is, during the operation of scaling, would the right circular cone be transformed into right circular cone? I mean, we know it will be circular, it will be cone, and it will be circular cone. Question is, the right is uh, transformed into right circular cone. Well, yes, obviously the reason is yes. Um, and again, the, uh, the point is uh, that the angles are always preserved. So if you connect this with the center of, uh, uh, of, of the circle, now it's a perpendicular, right? right? Now, the image of this would be another circle, right? And since these angles are preserved, and these are right angles, so this would be right angles. So the line connecting the apex to the center of the, uh, of the circle would be perpendicular to the whole uh, base plane of the transformed image. Center goes to center, circle goes to a circle, maybe a bigger radius, um, and the point to point, so this line will be transferred to this line, and since, since angles are preserved, it will be perpendicular. So, the right conical um, circular surface, right cone, right circular cone, is transformed by scaling into right cone. Again, question is whether all right circular cones um, are similar to each other. The answer is no, and again, the counter example is exactly like I was saying about cylinders. If one cone is a narrow one and another is the wide one so the proportionality between let's say the um, edge and uh, and the radius is not the same as as here and the proportionality must be preserved by by the scaling so cones are not not two cones are similar to each other. But if one is the result of a scaling of another, then this is the similarity, and the similarity preserves the, um, the type. Right circular cone will be transformed into right circular cone. My last uh, geometrical object is a sphere. And sphere is probably the easiest among them, because what is a sphere? This is the set of all points um, in three-dimensional space which are on the same distance from a point which is called a center, right? Now, the distance um, would be different in the image, right? But equality between the distances, so if these two points have the same distance from the center, their images will also have the same points from the center. So basically all these points which constitute a sphere will be transformed into some kind of a surface which contains points which are on the same distance from the center among themselves, which is a sphere. Now, there is still a, maybe a slightly open question whether this is all the points which are... Uh, maybe there is some kind of hole here um, which does not have any uh, prototypes, not, not, no source. But that's not the case because, you know, um, you remember uh, the uh, uh, s uh, scaling is a symmetrical transformation. So if I'm scaling um, from this point with a factor of f from this to this, then using the same point with a factor of 1 over f, I will get from there to here. So all these kind of considerations that there might be holes in the image, that's not really true because there will be um, holes in the source in the reverse transformation. So let's not go into these very delicate points because there are some underwater currents in this logic, but 
intuitively it's obvious and that's enough completely enough for this particular um, lecture that if these are all points on certain distance from the center these are also all points on the distance from the center which is related to this distance with some kind of a factor f all right but now and this is the only case when i can say that all spheres are similar to each other and this is actually very easy because there is only one dimension which defines the sphere you see in cylinder case you have two dimensions you have a radius of the base and you have the height or altitude and these are completely independent dimension and, and and since they are completely independent of each other they might be in different cylinders uh, they might be different so the proportion can be different between this and this and one cylinder and this and this and another cylinder we have two different parameters and can be and they can be non-proportional to each other that's why i cannot say that any two cylinders are similar to each other same thing with cones also two parameters there is a radius and there is a height two parameters are independent uh, of each other with any radius and any height I can build a cone, right? So I cannot say that any two cones are, proportion, are, are similar to each other because the proportionality might not be preserved. But in, in case of a sphere, I have only one parameter which defines the sphere, which is its radius. And since it's one parameter, then any other sphere would be similar to this one with the coefficient of proportionality equals to the uh, ratio between the radiuses. That that would be my factor by which I have to um, uh, scale. And how can I find, for instance, the um, the center? If I have two spheres in a space, can I find the center of uh, scaling? Well, actually, yes. I mean, if you think about it, it's supposed to be on the same. Since center goes to center, that means it will go to so the center of uh, scaling should be on the center line between the spheres now how can I get the uh, uh, how can I get the point on this line which is actually a, uh, a center of scaling well there are different ways but for instance you can think about plane which you just position in such a way that it touches two um, spheres and wherever this plane intersects this center line that would be the point but probably we will have to uh, d discuss it in a little bit more details when we will talk about spheres and uh, planes which are tangential to sphere etc all right so basically that's it for today um, i suggest you to go again into unizor.com and uh, look through the notes for this lecture and other than that, that's it. Thank you very much and good luck. <laughs>